optimum barrel time, right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Today I want to talk to you about doing a load development based on optimum barrel time. Um, you may have heard this term thrown around, it's, uh, it's a fairly accepted method these days and it's a little bit of a hack in doing a, a load development up really quickly and getting really great results out of it. So I want to talk you through how I do it and, and some of the results it's produced for me. So I'm going to do 308 Winchester, it's just easy, pretty much everybody owns one and it's going to be a hunting rifle so um, I'm going to look at the SST. So this is the Hornady manual, obviously I'm going to select a projectile, that's that's the most critical thing to start with. So there's the 165 SST up there, so we can see it's got a specific case overall length, that's because this bullet has a cantaloupe. Um, and it's designed to be crimped into the cantaloupe, which I will be utilizing. Like I said, it's a hunting ground. And the powder I use, my, my old favorite, Alliant Reloader 15. So I can come up here and I can see the maximum charge straight away is 44.3 grains. The nice thing about the Hornady manual too is it kind of um, gives you a rough idea of velocity in feet per second. Now this is from their test barrel, so real world it mightn't quite be the same. Their test barrel was a 22 inch 1 in 12 twist barrel. Welcome to the technical part of the game. This is a program called Quick Load. Um, now don't freak out about all the numbers, I'll talk you through all the important ones that you'll need to know. Um, so basically it's a it's a software that's available online, um, I'll put a link down below. You will have to pay for it, it's, it's not free software. Um, there might be other free stuff out there, I haven't really done a lot of investigation. Um, but there's, there's way more in-depth videos about this out on the internet as well. Um, so one of the really cool things that I do like about Quickload, so we're going to pick say barrel length, right? If I click on it. I click on it a little box appears and it tells me what it means so when they talk barrel length they mean measure from the breech face to the muzzle okay it's not the same as bullet travel based on the cartridge you're using it'll actually calculate the bullet travel for you which is quite nice so the first thing I need to do is select the correct cartridge type so hit the drop down menu and there's going to be cartridges in here you've never ever heard of Long story short, we're looking for 308 Winchester semi spec. Now, it does have CIP for your European proof house, so things like Tikas, Sarkos, things like that, that might come in handy. But generally speaking, semi spec's the way to go. Now, it's automatically going to drop me over into the 308 category of projectile, um, which is, of course, super handy. Now, there's also a button up here, and you notice you see Hornaday on there. So when you click this, it brings up another little window here and you can see all the different manufacturers of projectiles, okay? So say you wanted to load burger bullets, you'd open the burger bullet library. We're on Hornady, that's what we're using today, so we'll just leave it there for now. And so you drop down. Now it's automatically, like I said, giving you those 308 projectiles, so we're looking for a 165, so that's the second number on the list and we're looking for an SST interlock. The other cool thing here on the end, it actually gives you the the SKU or the, or the part number. So if you've got a box of, of projectiles, you can just quickly double check that. And I noticed that on quite a few, it does it on the Lee um, cast molds as well. And it's got the SKU number on that, on that bullet selection, which is really cool. So by doing that, you're gonna have populated most of these fields automatically by by selecting the, the cartridge and and the projectile so it knows it's a boat tail bullet um, now if you were loading some weird and wonderful projectile that that isn't in the library you can actually come up here and you can actually click this button here and it will actually allow you to build yourself a custom projectile so you can take all the measurements once again you hover over them tells you how to measure it and you can enter your own bullet uh, we'll just cancel and exit. We noted from that reloading log back there, it was 2.750. So I can just change that there. 
and we'll just click out of that box it's going to correct all the other boxes out for you so the other thing we need to do is the barrel length was actually 560 millimeters so that's the other cool thing it's got imperial in inches here and millimeters right next to each other so um, being in the metric world I kind of jump back and forward by doing that it's actually calculated the bullet travel okay so you don't have to work that one out yourself now because we've selected the cartridge at semi spec it's automatically populated the maximum pressure um, based on based on a semi spec um, cartridge bullet weight automatically populated at 165 grains now the case capacity is populated by default but you can play with this so this is um, grains of water so that's basically leaving a primer and filling the case up full of water and then weighing them and, and measuring the actual capacity of the case so you can do that if you want once again it, it talks you through there for high pressure loads maximum loads things like that that really becomes um, quite quite helpful um, and then over here in this actually sorry I'll just click apply calculate now we're going to jump over here to Reloader 15 um, which happens to be the powder I'm using now as you can see here from this drop down once again there's pretty much every powder you can um, you can think of your Hodgdon's, your IMRs, Normas, Ramshot you name it okay so even your ADI, your Australian Defence Industries um, these are popular here in New Zealand so you've got your options we're just obviously Reloader 15 and 42 grains that's well within the safe margin so we'll hit apply calculate here now the other one I pay attention to here is the um, the fill percentage so this is the amount of um, space within the case that's occupied by powder so it's at 97.6 percent which I'm really happy with it's not too much that it's going to create a compressed charge but it's not too little that the the flash from the primer is going to overshoot all the powder and create a detonation rather than a powder burn so that's really nice to see yeah anywhere between sort of 90 and and 98 is really comfortable once you get into like 99 you you're borderline on potentially compressing a charge if the powder doesn't shake nicely into the case um, and that's really when you start to do things like the um, the grains of, of water or grains of H2O to actually measure the physical capacity of that case so you get this nice little graph down here so over on the left hand side vertical you've got the chamber pressure um, and the, the pressure curve is denoted in the red um, and then the velocity curve is donated in the blue um, it may be coming out a little purple on the screen um, and so obviously P max the pressure maximum it's denoted here and as it travels down the barrel your bullet travel times in milliseconds of course you can see obviously the velocity comes up even though the pressure is starting to tail off and then you've got the zones here obviously the the red zone up here you're in danger you've gone higher than the 62,000 psi um, you've got the purple area in here which you're starting to push the limits of things and then this is your sort of final safe zone in here the yellow and this also changes over here where it also denotes the pressure you actually get a, a muzzle velocity as well um, and then the one another couple of things I look at the amount of propellant burnt this can become quite critical if you've got a really short barrel seeing whether you're actually going to be burning all the propellant or not in a 22 inch barrel with a 308 it's not really a problem if this was a 24 inch barrel you find that powder burn would get better you're burning more powder before the projectile leaves the barrel so just as an experiment I can show you if we just take this and we change that to say a 24 inch barrel apply calculate apply calculate all right that's changed a little bit not a lot so 90 six percent powder burn is more than enough now here's the number I'm looking at for this load development it's 10% pressure max to muzzle so this is the the barrel time the, the time that the bullet travels down the barrel and to give you the cliff notes version of optimum barrel time when the powder ignites you create a shock wave and this is where we talk barrel harmonics that shock wave passes from the chamber down to the muzzle and then back to the chamber and just back and forward what you're ultimately looking at doing is having that shockwave back at the chamber when the projectile is leaving the muzzle okay so the shockwaves 
the furthest possible distance away from the projectile leaving the barrel. And in theory that should create the best harmonic um, and therefore you should have an accurate load. I can't stress this enough, this is purely theoretical. It's based off calculations and we all know stuff doesn't quite work this well in the real world. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to the optimum barrel time calculator which is in an Excel document. Um, there is tables available online too if you don't have Excel and you can just find them but just remember that 1.184 milliseconds and we'll come back to that in a second. Okay so this is the Excel copy of the OBT calculator. Um, so like I said you can get it in a big you know like a4 grid with all the times on it but this is the easiest way so what you want to do is put your barrel length in here and you can obviously select between millimeters and inches um, and you can adjust the node along here obviously the nodes basically are infinite but generally you start at one and we put in 42 grains and we knew it came out at uh, 1.184 so if we have a look on here 1.129 so that's quite a bit faster so we could look at upping the powder charge um, and seeing if we can meet this faster optimum barrel time or we could look at dropping the powder charge and meeting the slower accuracy node so what we're going to do is we're going to write down both those numbers 1.129 and 1.204 right so back over here at quick load now we've got two options we either increase or decrease the powder charge so I'm gonna increase the powder charge to start with so what we'll do is we'll just go in half grain increments so we'll change that to 42.5 and we'll hit apply calculate again and see how much it comes down so it came down to 1.165 we're still quite away to get to 29 so let's go up to 43 grains calculate 1.4 okay so we're starting to now you can see we're at 99.9 percent .9%. so realistically anything more than this and we're going to get a compressed charge now compressed charges are not necessarily a bad thing as long as you're doing them safely and consistently if you're interested in compressed charges do the research first don't just go jumping into them if you're a new reloader so I'm not going to go up that high not interested plainly um, basically this is a bush rifle that's probably only ever going to shoot 100 meters or 100 yards in its life nothing really anything more so I'm not so worried so we're going to drop down so we're going to go let's go with 41.8 okay and we're going to go apply calculate now we've got 1192. So we're starting to come really close to that other node, the 1.204. So what we're just going to do is we're going to keep dropping it down. We'll do 0.2 of a grain increments. See, 1.200. So that's very, very close. Or a tenth. Oh. Helps if you get the right number. Okay, and this example happens to have worked out really well. So, this node here is sitting perfectly on 41.5 grains. So it's 96% or 96.5% roughly fill capacity. So that's good, I'm comfortable with that. It's not likely to compress unless I'm doing something seriously wrong. Um, but it's also filling the case up to give me a consistent powder burn. So the pressure is you know, within safe for a modern rifle. I'm happy with that. So that's a good place to start. 41.5 grains of reload of 15. Now, I'm not going to bet 100% that that is the perfect powder charge. And if I just load that, it's going to give me the best results in the world. I'm going to load a few either side of that as well. That's where a chronograph comes in really helpful. You can shoot groups as well if you don't want to invest in a chronograph the choice is up to you um, but really 
in an ideal world you kind of want a chronograph result and a group result as well because they don't always match up so let's switch back over to my reloading log and we'll have a look at how we're going to do this okay so back at the reloading log we know that that 41.5 grains was as close as humanly possible to the theoretical accuracy node i just want to stress this is theoretical okay what i'm going to do is i do have the rcbs charge master so i can drop tenth of a grain loads so i'm going to take that advantage and i'm basically going to load a couple of rounds either side so those are the two sort of in the middle that i'm really looking for the accuracy out of and then i've got some either side to give me a, a margin i've got three rounds each now i could chronograph them and shoot groups at the same time but my chronograph is a magneto speed it does clamp to the barrel and being a really thin barrel um, i get a little bit concerned about altering the harmonics so i'm going to group test first in here and then so after doing the group tests here are my results basically i was looking like i said hunting rifle 100 yards one moa is is more than enough accuracy for what i want funnily enough that 41.5 that we talked about produced the best group and to see that 41.4 coming in very close i know that if i create a load within that area i'm going to get pretty good group sizes so what i then did is went back and did the chronograph right so from here i took those two ideal loads that produced the best groups um, and i came back and i loaded five of each to do a chronograph test they both produced fantastic results as far as i'm concerned um, the velocity is a little bit slower than ideal but honestly you know in that 2500 feet per second or, or just shy of it range uh, i'm more than happy so you get your your average muzzle velocities here and you get your minimum and your maximum here your standard deviation and your extreme spread now i'm i'm very happy with the results really on both these loads um, you know a standard deviation of five feet per second is, is fantastic and an extreme spread in the teens is is fantastic as well in this instance it turns out that that optimum barrel time calculator gave me the answer straight off the bat now we don't live in a perfect world so that's not always going to happen basically what happened is I used a total of 28 rounds to do a low development so I'm more than happy with that result thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe I release new videos every Friday so hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on anything see you in the next one